Hey everyone, this is David Starr from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today I'm interviewing Emily Peachy, who plays Rachel in the indie teenage and religious drama Fishbowl. Uh, we're going to talk to Emily in just a second, but first let's check out that trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that'd be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. We live in Bishop County. No matter what you do, somebody knew you would. People talk in this town. Somebody saw it. Another person talked about it. So either you talk or you're talked about. But they call this town the fishbowl. When you climb to the top, you just slide right back down. He didn't like the way people looked at us. Father said, everything happens for a reason. But I don't think he really believed that. father started wrestling with his faith. He ended up winning. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, you know, this should be a, a pretty, pretty lightweight interview. Uh, you know, I talked to the directors uh, over the weekend, so I, I have a little bit of insight from them, but I'd love to talk to you also because this movie is pretty fantastic. It's, a, it, it's, it's something that kind of, I see a lot of movies in my, in my little hobby and, you know, occasionally you'll have one that just kind of like hits you and, and yeah. kind of, you know, gives you, gives you kind of a shock and this was definitely that for me, so. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. We yeah. were so, so happy with it and so proud of it. Um, so I guess, you know, what, uh, I guess, so this film finished in 2018 and I think, uh, I think that Stephen and Alexis said that they, you, you all debuted at like at Austin in 2018 or 2019. Yeah. Like almost exactly two years ago today. Um, it, it premiered at the Austin Film Festival, which was, which was really cool. It was at the Paramount Theater. It was like really, really cool. Um, you know, in Austin, such a great town. It was awesome, you know, being there and, um, and seeing our movie on the big screen. And it was very, very cool. Yeah, I can imagine that would be a lot of fun and, and just, you know, feels like a, like a world away at this point right now. So. Yeah, it really, yes, I know. Really crazy. And, and so, you know, then the film kind of, I don't know what happened between then and now, but it's being released now. So I imagine that there was some amount of promotion during the festival circuit, some amount of promotion now. You know, how, how has that been? You know, what have been the differences and, and what's it like, I guess, kind of releasing a film during COVID? Did it just kind of come as a surprise? Like, oh, the film's coming out now because <laughs> you yeah, haven't heard about it in years? Yeah, you know, it, it really did come as a surprise, but honestly, it couldn't have been more perfect, you know, because um, people are so thirsty for content right now. I know I am, especially like I, I am, I've watched all of Netflix and Hulu, like that's just <laughs> So, um, you know, I'm so happy that it came out during this time. And I feel like it'll get a lot more viewers because we are at home and we are looking for new things. I mean, it's, it's a great film and so well written and so well directed that I think it would have, you know, gotten hits anyway. But um, during this time, I think it, it even passed what it may have done originally. I'm not sure, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, definitely. Fingers crossed. I mean, you, you, you all are kind of lucky because you had that festival circuit at the start. I've talked to a couple of indie developers that, you know, missed out on that. So they're happy to have it out. And, you know, in this kind of new world, it seems like everything is being released digitally and everyone's kind of on an even foothold. But you at least had that little groundswell at the start. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I, I really like this film. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm so happy. I think it's so, I think it was so well done. I mean, the directors did such an amazing job. And I think the music um, that goes with it kind of has this very eerie vibe that just really hits it home. And I think it, it it's perfect. I'm so proud of it. I'm so glad you talked about the music because uh, that was one thing that hit me too. You've got this like, this kind of like grunge feel, yep. you know, like I, I felt like I was listening to music from the nineties, like, you know, like hole or, uh, or something like that. And then you also yeah, have this really beautiful classic. Kind of, yeah. I think that's kind of like what they wanted too, because it is supposed to be in the nineties and you know, it definitely, yes, very like that kind of feel for sure. And then you also have this kind of beautiful classical music at, at times that kind of evokes this, dreamlike setting that you sometimes have in this film so it's just a really nice kind of juxtaposition of those two uh types of music and you kind of they come in at the perfect spots 
Yeah. Yeah. I um, was doing an interview the other day and they just like started by playing the music. It was like the dun, 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 dun. And I was like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> oh man. Well, wish I would have thought of that. I, I dressed up as Rick. So. Uh... Oh my gosh. It's no, I got that. I was like, there's Rick. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, this is you know the, the interview with Alexa and Stephen was the first time I'd worn a collared shirt in like six months, so this is the second time, but it's uh, definitely out of the ordinary for me. <laughs> I mean, not gonna lie, I have pajama pants on with a sweater, but it's okay. With Zoom, that's perfect. That that's kind of the outfit, right? That's that's basically the uh, uniform. It's the Zoom uniform, and like that is one of the Zoom perks. I'm here for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess you know what. Uh, how did you get attached to this film? What what drew you to this film? Did you had you worked with uh, Stephen and Alexa before, or is it just uh, you know the script? You know, or the and it was so wild because we both grew up in like the DC metropolitan area, and we were both in the film world, which is pretty a pretty small community, and we're all around the same age. And we have worked when we started filming Fishbowl, we realized we had worked on so many of the same projects and had never crossed paths. Um, so it was kind of weird that we never had. Um, and then they knew a lot of the same people that I knew. So some of the other people in the movie, like I had been in things with and they had been in things with, but um, our paths had never crossed. But um, I saw the, uh, the casting for it and I went to my first audition. I went to my second audition and I remember I was sick as a dog and I was like, I am not gonna get this. And also I was like, I was 26 and playing a 16 year old. I was like, there is, this is a stretch even for me. Like as much as I want to pretend I'm in high school, like I'm just not. So I was like, you know what, I'm not going to get this. And they called me back for a callback. And that's when I got the script. And then I sat down and like read the entire script start to finish, um, which I don't usually do. And it was just so well written. And, um, and then I, had, I saw that uh, Alexa does photography and I saw all of her like photography work. And I was like, this is amazing. This is going to all come together. It's going to be something really artsy, really cool. And um, I really, really wanted it after that. I was so happy I got it. <laughs> that is so amazing that you, in, that you, auditioned without having the script? I mean, did you just have like a treatment that, that kind of roughly said what was going on or just, you know, just go um, on faith, I guess? <laughs> like, honestly, first auditions, you almost never get the script. Um, you usually get just sides, like a little portion of the script. And um, sometimes like the scene is really clear, but sometimes, I mean, for that, for that one, I, I kind of got sort of what was going on, at least in the scene. But, you know, sometimes you go to these auditions and you're like, you know, start screaming. I'm like, what am I, what am, why are we screaming? What's happening? <laughs> you know? So, um, it's definitely hard, but that one, I, I at least knew enough, um, you know, about the character. They, they writ they wrote the sides pretty well. So it was like a scene that made sense to the actor, which was great. That's awesome. And did you, did you audition for Rachel specifically, or did you try for any of the other, other, uh, sisters as well? I think I auditioned. For, no, I did. I auditioned for Rachel from the start. Yeah. Um, because Belle, the other sister, had already been cast, and then the other one was supposed to be, like, 14, and even that was, like, a little bit, that was a little too young for me, yeah. so, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I was always, always Rachel. That's, that's awesome. That's, uh, I guess there's only so much Hollywood magic that they can do. It's, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, 14 might be cutting it. And, uh, you know, I like that you mentioned Alexa's, uh, photography and the style, like, that was another thing that kind of hit me from the film, and you know, I don't know if you could, if, if you saw this when you were filming it, but this film just had such a fantastic, you know, style. There was, there were certain light colors were used on the, on the film to make it get kind of dreamlike and the sets were perfect. And, you know, the outfits were kind of perfect in the, in the various stages of, of their lives. Um, was that something that you kind of, that, that you didn't, you, you saw when you were filming or something that kind of, you saw when everything came together? Did you, when did you know that this would be kind of something special? Well, I, I, when I saw Alexa's photography originally, I was like, this is going to have such an amazing art direction just because she has such a creative eye um, that I knew it was going to come together. But then when we were filming, you know, um, they are so good. Actually, everybody on the crew was so good about picking things that, um, like, whether it be like a set or, you know, hair, makeup, Janice is so great too, um, you know, and like the costumes and they just like see it and they're like, this would fit perfectly with this and with this and with this. And it all just like came together. Like, uh, Steven and Alexa found our main set, like our house, the Simon house in the film, because it was like at the end of their street. 
And like, I, I had driven past that house before and like never noticed it, but they're like, oh, we could do something with it. We could make it very artsy. And then, you know, um, we had the costumes come in that were kind of these, you know, schoolgirl uniforms and then nightgowns. And then Janice had this very like innocent makeup on us that ma it just all came together in this like innocent girls, creepy, eerie. And they all just had this very creative eye and it all just came together. Yeah, that's that's uh, perfect observations. Especially the I also like the the nightgowns because you know you've got the the white when they're kind of in the more religious side of the family. But then if you go back to the past where they have these bright colors and you know everything kind of feels very different, it gives it's it's really nice because it gives you this you know sense that something is, has changed without them having to specifically say like on screen like five years earlier or something along those lines. It really kind of just makes everything flow together. Yes. Yeah, it was, it really came together and everybody was on the same page. So I think everybody definitely had this, this vision and it just really came together. Um, so what drew you to Rachel specifically, other than like, it sounds like maybe, you know, that was the only one that was available, but was there something about her character that kind of spoke to you when, uh, when you were uh, auditioning? Oh, absolutely. Like, I loved that character out of all three sisters the most because she is so, she's like the voice of reason and she's so straight laced. And that's very different from how I am in real life. I'm never the, uh, the sensible one. I'm like, yeah, we should do it. Let's go. Let's have fun. You know what I mean? Like, I'm definitely not like, you know, we, we got to listen to the rules. Like, I'm never like that. So I thought <laughs> that that was, uh, you know, a fun change of pace for me and uh and something very out of out of my element so i thought it would be fun to you know kind of stretch myself in that way and i, I really really enjoyed it yeah that's awesome you get to kind of play the character but, but uh, i think that's what i really lo also love about this film is that bell is like the rebellious one but what she's doing is just it felt like it's like normal behavior that a teenager would do and and just because of this upbringing in this town it's like seen as these like grave sins and it, it, I, I really liked that kind of juxtaposition i was watching i was like this is just what you know like I'll probably have to worry about this one when my kids get older, but it just seems like something that kids do and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be shocking anywhere else. Yeah, it is true. Cause she's actually like the same one. She's the one that's doing what teenage girls should be doing. And you know, everybody else is just, you know, so strict, but it's, it's definitely, it was definitely a fun character to play for sure. So seeing as you know, you were, you were preparing for, for her character. How did you prepare for the role? Did you, you know, I don't know, Go to, go to church? Did you go to the library? Like, I'm trying to think how you would prepare for, for Rachel. Yeah, you know, I mean, I really did just try to, like, get into that character of being, like, very straight-laced, very, you know, follow the rules. Even, like, you know, a couple weeks prior, I was, like, kind of getting into character just to try to, you know, try it on and see how that would be for me. And, um, yeah, it, 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 I think it came together. It was very, very cool. And it was so well-written, too, that, um, you know, it was definitely easy to uh, an easy character to jump into. And all the, the sisters are so different that I think there's a good contrast between all of us, which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, definitely. They're, they're all so different, yet they all kind of complement each other very well, I think. So it's been, yeah. that was a nice aspect. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of the sisters and, and, and the cast, what was it like working with, with uh, you know, your co-stars, um, Belle and, and Carolyn and Rick? You know, was, it, uh, was it kind of a natural transition into this, you know, strain family or was you know did you all do things before to kind of establish that kind of family environment you know we i think when we all three met together it was our first day of filming and um i had met caroline before because she was at the audition but bell had already been cast so i had never met bell before but uh, the chemistry between us was so insane that we almost became like sisters from day one <laughs> seriously like it was it was wild like we would you know we would break and we would cut from filming and we would all just you know just chill in that bed that you know the simon bed and like talk and you know have fun and we were almost, we were, we were sisters like straight off the bat. It was crazy. And then Rick um, is first of all, just such an amazing actor. Like he is so phenomenal because his character is so different from who he is as a human, but um, he is one of the nicest people and so genuine. And we had a lot of fun. I, I think I've told this story before, but like I, um, between takes, like he does a lot of stunts and stage combat and he would teach like Caroline and I just how to do stage combat. So we would like be backstage and just, you know, like hitting each other and then like <laughs> bursting out laughing afterwards. And it was so much fun. We had, we had a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah, with, with a film that has 
you know, there, there are definitely moments of levity in the film. There's there's a lot of like dry humor and some situational comedy that I really liked. But a, a film that's this serious, it's always you know, you always wonder what that filming was like. But it's good to hear that the you know there was a lot of fun and 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 love in that uh, whole set. Yeah, we were definitely a family. And there's a scene where we're all running with our mom. It's like a flashback scene and we have sparklers. And, um, you know, we really do look like a family, but we were having so much fun that day that we were acting like a family, you know, on and off screen. And it was just, it was a blast. So the uh, the, the fight choreography that you learned, that, you know, uh, what what kind of what kind of moves did you learn? Are you going to take that to uh, some some future production? Are you going to become a, an action star now? I mean, that could be. Oh, I would love to. I would. I'm I'm looking for an excuse to use that because it's a skill that I just can't like you know flex on very often. But I love it, and it was it was really cool. Yeah, we um he taught us like how to like slap slap each other and like get the angles so it like looked like we, and they, it really did look like it. Like it looked like she was just slapping me. And I, I absolutely loved it. It was so funny. And um, yeah, he would put like different sound effects to it. So when we were like punching each other, he would make like a punch, you know, put that like over it. And it was so funny. And yeah, I hope, I hope that's a skill I can use at some point. Yeah, no, definitely. That'd be, I mean, yeah, you, you've got the time right now. You could start working on your, uh, you know, karate or kung fu, whatever, whatever style you want. And then <laughs> exactly. I'm out of quarantine stronger. There we go. That's my calling. So did he help? I mean, th there wasn't a lot of fighting in the film, but there were a few, a few like you know, conflicts. Did 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 Rick help with that, or did was there someone else kind of coordinating? Because it sounds like he could have you know, played double duty there too. He definitely did, and like he is so good at it, and he he does stunts a lot for um, like huge huge films too. So um, it was it was definitely cool. I don't know if they had somebody else too, but Rick definitely stepped in and helped a lot with that, and he was just so good at it that um, yeah, he definitely definitely helped with a lot of those fight scenes. That's awesome. That sounds like it sounds like a lot of fun to shoot, and um, it sounds like it was it was quite an experience. That's really great to hear. Yeah, it was great. And it was, you know, shot near my house and near there. Like it was, it felt very homey. And, um, you know, these are people that I've known in the acting world since I was little, minus Stephen and Alexa, but, you know, some of the other characters, um, the guy who plays like my love interest in the film, I've done like four films with and I've known since I was like 12 or 13. So, um, you know, it was cool. It felt like everybody coming back together, like a, a Baltimore reunion for the actor crew, which was cool. That's that's really awesome. So I'm, I'm based in DC. So I'm just writing this, uh, Right in that area, so that's really great to hear. Yeah. Oh, is it crazy over there right now? Um, you know, I haven't really left my house much. I think you know, I'm I'm up in Maryland, so I think it's been it's been pretty good here. You know, I think our cases are generally fairly low. I think, and everyone's kind of been following the rules, so it, it hasn't been too bad here. But I think you know, I've just been kind of trying to stay indoors and not go out much because just never know, right? I guess I'm kind of like that family at this point. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Well, that's a good so, thing. So now I'd like to move on. I call it the lightning round. It's just lightweight questions that kind of relate to the characters, kind of relate to the movie. You can choose to answer them if you want to. Uh, you can choose not to. I, I won't be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. So okay, uh, if you're game. Oh, uh, so, so the, the first question is, did you grow up religious? Not really, but I did go to a Catholic school. Okay, that, that, yeah, that probably imprinted some religion on you then. It, you know, it didn't. <laughs> um, okay. I went to Catholic college, but it's weird because the people that I went to school with, um, it wasn't like people didn't really, I don't know, it wasn't a huge part of it, but um, so not really. Sticking with that. That was a terrible lightning answer. My gosh, it was so much. Sorry. That's fine. But the, really the Catholic yes school is, no. <laughs> the Catholic school is interesting because, you know, the, you must have had at least, you must have had some experience there for the, for the role. So that, you know. Oh, Definitely. Okay. I, I really didn't have any experience with, with um, you know, the Catholic religion, but, um, you know, in college, I, I got at least a little bit. So that was, that was kind of cool. There you go. Um, did you ever get caught cheating on a test? Yes. <laughs> that <it>? one, yes. <laughs> um, have you ever found a lost animal? No, but I okay. wish. There's a missing turtle in my neighborhood and I want to find it so bad. Oh, no, now is not a good time for a turtle to be missing. On the streets like that, no. Well, if you find it, hopefully, hopefully it'll be alive and, and hopefully you get a reward. So I know. Gonna go looking for it. What is the uh, what's the worst thing you've bought from TV or the internet? Mm, ooh, um, I buy so much crap. <laughs> I am like such a sucker for like a gimmick. So you know, I have so many of like those food things, like 
the egg things that you like put in the microwave and I have like the brownie, like the edgeless brownies. I'm just such a sucker for as seen on TV, anything. I mean, how do those, how do those edgeless brownies work? Do those, uh, those make really, really good brownies? Are they perfect or? They were burnt. Oh. Yeah, they were supposed to be edgeless, but somehow I made them all edges. Huh. I don't know how. Well, you, you never know, I guess. Um, <laughs> which of the girls do you think you're most like? Definitely Belle. So uh, what's, what's next for you? So um, I have another movie out in theaters right now called Tar. And then I am, I just got cast in another show that hopefully um, we'll start filming soon. It's a little crazy with COVID, but um, yeah, I think we're going to start filming that uh, hopefully in the next couple months. So it's exciting. That was Emily Peachy, who plays Rachel in the indie religious and family drama Fishbowl. It's available digitally, so you can watch it on pretty much any distributor that you like, and I definitely recommend you check it out. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot to make sure all my new videos go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you.